Okay. I think I might be live. <laughs> I'm not sure. I think I'm live. Maybe we'll give it a second. Hang on. Right. YouTube sh saying we're live now. Okay. So I'm just going to start, start the stream off with some water. Okay. Well, hello, everyone. Today, today we have a live stream. It's been a very... How long was it? I think September was the last time we did a live stream. Um, and I've got to say, I'm not used to it. I'm hot, I'm sweaty, and I'm in a shirt that's going to show that. So we're off to a fantastic start today. Um, but the whole purpose of today's live stream is that one of the things I've been doing this year is my 2022 trades challenge. Um, and as a result of that, I've been trying to buy, sell PC hardware. So to give you the context, if you haven't already seen the videos, um, we started out with a really old desktop PC, completely worthless, and we've been trading it up. And let's, I'll be honest, we haven't made some great trades. It's been pretty rough so far. We're nowhere near our target. But the purpose of today's live stream is to test what is in this box. Ooh, let's, not my address, but we'll hide the person who purchased this box's address. I bought this at a boot fair, hence the fact this is titled the uh, Boot Full Hall Stream. So, and that's what's in here, right? We are full. Now, let's see if I can show it on this camera, right? We are full of CPUs, RAM, mostly RAM. I mean, I shall get out the CPUs to show you very quickly because, oh, I do not have high hopes for these. All right, let's have a look. So the C there's a couple of CPUs in this box, right? And this is them here. So you can see them on that camera. I take. I hope you guys can hear me. I assume you guys can hear me. One of them is this CPU. Now, I don't know what it is. I know it came out of a laptop. I mean, you can see that straight away. Now, it was in a box loose. And so if you look at the back side of it, it's a uh, PGA chip rather than LGA. And it has a fair few number of bent pins here. So... I wouldn't trust any of these CPUs to actually work, but in case anyone is interested in what we've got in terms of CPUs, and this is what we've got. So this first one, this one here, this is an Intel Core 2 Duo E8400, worth pennies, really not worth much. And then also over here, we've got again an E6750. So again, very, very worthless. However, you might be wondering, well, if you're doing a trading challenge, why on earth did you purchase a box full of crappy CPUs and crappy RAM? Well, the reason is, is that I paid, I think it was £5 for this entire box. So this entire box, which is full, by the way, right? You can see it all in there. £5. So stick it all on eBay, whether it be a bundle, whether it be, you know, individually, we can get hopefully a decent amount of profit but that's what the plan is today today we're going to go through we're going to do some testing and we're going to find out what works what doesn't work so we know whether we want to sell that as like a big job lot bundle or mixed working and not working whether we want to try and sell it all off individually as tested working that's the plan and we're not going to do any in-depth tests we're not going to run mem test we're not going to do anything special like that no stress tests on the RAM today. I'll do that myself separately. Instead, what we're going to do today is essentially just boot into BIOS. As long as we can get to BIOS, I'm going to class it as working, put it in the working pile. If we can't boot into BIOS, then we're going to get rid of it and it's going to be deemed non-functional. So that's essentially the plan for today. Uh, do I want to get it all out on the table? What do you guys think? Should we get it all out on the table? And hello. So there's a couple of people in the live stream now, so I'm going to say hello. Hello, Pavel. Hello. I, I don't even know how you say that, right? A, a cavi. I don't know. Tell me how you pronounce it in the live in, in in the chat. Let me know how you pronounce that so I can say it properly. And that's what I'm going to do. Actually, I, I've decided. We're going to get it all out, all right? We're going to move my PS2 keyboard because this is this most of the stuff in this box is DDR2, right? So I've got a really ancient test set up here that you can see. But we're going to move all of that. All right, that's move that all out of the way. All right, are you guys ready? I'm going. Oh, hang on. I carvey, right? 
There we go. It's pronounced iCarly. Hello, iCarly. Right. Let's get it all spread out on the table, shall we? Let's get everything out of the way. All right. This is probably going to break some of it, by the way. But who cares? Right. The whole point is RAM is supposed to be durable. So this should should be okay. There's some CPUs at the bottom as well. Wow. So we've got a lot. <laughs> we have a look at it all. There's. We're not going to be able to test this all today, surely. I don't think we'll get through all of this today. But we've got some extra CPUs in here, which is nice. So maybe we'll give those a test at some point as well. Who knows? And I've realised. <laughs> I've realised my mistake because I've put all of the RAM exactly where I need my test bench for, for this camera to see it. So maybe what we'll do is we'll just shift the camera. <laughs> there you go. You guys can see it. You can watch it like that instead. Right. That'll do. Right. I'm sure that'll do. Mm. And yeah. Like Harvey makes a good point. Let's make a update on the uh, Discord to let everyone know that we're live, right? Okie dokie. Right. Where, where's the... How do I get a link to the stream? I don't know, actually. How do I get a link to the stream? Um... See, the, whole, the new YouTube dashboard is useless, and I hate it. Right, here we go. Get shareable link. Send. Okay, right. There we go. That's, that's been posted on YouTube. So hopefully we'll get a couple more people come in at some point. Right, there we go. Okay. So it's a lot of RAM. I probably should have weighed how much RAM it is. Um, but I'd go in the magnitude of kilograms, right? So I'm expecting this to be at maybe one or two kilograms of RAM. So potentially we could just sell this as like a gold recovery job lot. In fact, anything that's not working, I might just do that and make it a gold recovery job lot. We could, you know, I spent five pounds on this. I'm expecting, you know, easily to quadruple the amount of money we've got from this, right? I'm expecting at least 20 pounds, bare minimum, maybe even upwards of 30, 40, 50, depending on the quality of what we've got in this bundle here and, you know, how much it's, well, how much of it's actually working. So here's the test bench, right? You can see on the screen, right? This is a, basically just a capture card capturing the output of this PC. And what I'm gonna do is go through, get it all tested, right? Let's do that now, so. Oh, I've cocked this all up by undoing the RAM in that in that area there, but it's fine, right? We'll work around it. We'll work around my cock up. All right, let's move this all out of the way. So, I've got a PS2 keyboard as well, by the way, right? Because it's a DDR2 system, and by default, USB keyboards are not supported on this BIOS. So we need a PS2 keyboard just in case we reset the BIOS at any point. Um, so that's the plan, right? At the moment, we've got a known working RAM stick in here. So if I turn the PC on, you should notice this uh, on the main section of the stream is going to update eventually. Give it a couple seconds. Right, here we go. So you can see, right, that's the output of the screen. Memory's tested working. Uh, not that you can actually see that on my webcam's covering it up if i enter into the bios it will show you that we've got a one gigabyte stick of ddr2 ram in this is my own personal stick of ram it's not a part of this trade challenge so that will go back into my case of ddr2 ram which i have here so i'll just get it all up to show you demonstrate to you that it's working and then we'll um 
we'll, we'll get started on the testing. So let me go through whilst this is it's so slow. I hate this machine. We're going to be here forever. But whilst that's loading up, I'm just going to very quickly have a look at the chat and see what people are saying. So what have we got? We got oh, so we got a couple of people in now. So oh, Matt, tech tested Matt. If you haven't, if if you guys aren't subscribed to Matt, go and get subscribed because Matt has a brilliant channel. He does. He basically. If if I if I'm a specialist, if I specialize in budget shit hardware, Matt specializes in overclocking that budget hardware. And the amount of effort he goes into to push this old decrepit hardware to its limits, well, it's definitely worth subscribing for. So go check out Matt's tech tested channel because it's worthwhile. It's always worthwhile. And um, what else have we got? So we've got Pavel, I have a tube of gold CPU pins from dead old CPUs. That's a, yeah, that's definitely a weird thing to collect, but hey, power to you, my man. Okay, yeah, and this is, this is the issue, right? I've got so few DDR2 boards to test with. It took me ages to find just this one that was working, and it seems to be a bit iffy getting into the BIOS, even with known working RAM. So today's live stream is not going to be um, particularly... What's the word? Comprehensive is probably the right word, right? I'm going to have to do a lot of retesting after this live stream. But yeah, we've got a good little collection of CPUs going on here. And one of the things that was included in this bundle, which I wasn't expecting, was a Vodafone 3G USB... Woo! <laughs> 3G USB stick. You can see it there. So essentially, you put a SIM card in this somewhere, I assume, and that means you can have like a 3G hotspot wherever you go. Pretty useless now, but we've got 5G. You know, it's a little bit behind the times. But hey, right? Who's going to say no to a free 3G USB stick? Anyway, right. Let's turn this off and get testing. So I think it's mostly DDR2 in this bundle. There's a little bit of DDR3 from what I've spied so far. But for today, I think we're going to mostly try and test DDR2. And if we fancy doing some DDR3, then I'll go back to my wardrobe, which is... I said, wardrobe is more of a shelving system that used to be a wardrobe for the motherboards and stuff i'll grab a ddr3 motherboard and we can do some ddr3 testing as well all right let's have a look so where should we start with our bundle hey eh? let's have a look right so where do you guys want to start let's have a look so well let's let's uh start by taking out the old ram we'll take that out so this is this here is my ram that is not part of today's testing so i'm going to put that to one side Right, that's going back in the case, and that's going back in my RAM drawer. So we'll ignore all of that for today. Let's have a look. So is there anything that looks kind of fancy? Right, what's this here? So this looks kind of fancy, but it's DDR3. So we don't want DDR3. What have we got here? Two gigabytes DDR2. There we go. Right, so we'll test this first. Does it have a matching stick? All right, because if it does, we can test it in dual channel. However, oh, this makes me so uncomfortable just going through a pile of RAM like this. Oh, I don't like it. Oh, someone make it stop. <laughs> no, I can't see an obvious... Oh, there's another CPU buried down. Oh, there's a couple of CPUs buried down here and some grass. Brilliant. We've got some grass in the bundle. What have we got here? We've got an i3, an i3-550. Oh, that's the best CPU we've got so far. And a Celeron G530. That's, I can't remember. Can someone tell me how old the G530 is? I feel like it's quite old. Uh, but we've got an i3-550, which is the newest and best CPU as far as I'm aware. Um, Oh, and brilliant. That's a that's a great tip. Bro, you should test the green one. Yeah, okay, we'll test the green one. Thank you. <laughs> um, but anyway, let's have a right, let's let's aim this back over here and we'll get this Team Group Elite DDR2 RAM stick tested. Right, so chuck that in like that. Off we go and power on the system and hopefully we should get an output on the screen, eh? Any second now. Fingers crossed. There we go. Right, here's an output. 
Right, okay, so that's good, right? We've got a post, right? And that's essentially all we're really looking for is that the system posts. Yes, it's got a disk boot failure, but that's because we've got nothing plugged into it. We don't want to boot into Windows. We don't want to boot into Linux because we're not doing mem test, as I've already said. So it's, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that, right? So we're going to class that stick as working. Right, where do I, let's turn this off. Now I'm going to need somewhere to put all of my working RAM and I want to put all of the non-functional stuff back in the box it all came in because I don't care if it gets broken, it's already not working. So where are we going to put the working stuff? Uh, let's see if we can grab a box. Preferably one without my address on, that's probably for the best. So We'll just rip the address off the box. Take that off. There we go. Right, so. This box here is where we're going to put all of our working RAM. So, we've got broken, working, broken, working. Okay, that's the plan. And then let's have a look at chat again. What have we got going on? So, um, G530, the, uh, the seller on that we've got, that's 2011 that came out. Um, yeah, and you know, Matt's made some good point. If one of the, if, if some of our RAM doesn't post, then cleaning it off with isopropyl alcohol or contact cleaner or something like that, you know, it's, it's that, that could potentially help. But as he says, DDR2 is very resilient. So in theory, we should be pretty good to go here. Um, I do have some isopropyl alcohol around somewhere. Here it is. Got a bit of isopropyl alcohol here, so potentially we can give that a test. Got a bit of kitchen roll as well, so yeah, we could maybe do that if we uh, run into some troublesome sticks. But anyway, let's. Anyway, that's our first stick of RAM in the good pile, and I have already tested this. If I have a bad stick of RAM, or at least if I if I don't put any RAM in this. It doesn't post whatsoever, so we don't get any display outputs. So that's what I'm expecting to see if we have bad RAM. And I appreciate RAM can fail in other ways that wouldn't present itself at this stage, but we're not doing an in-depth test at the moment. It's just an easy breezy live stream. So I'll do in-depth testing myself later on before things get sold. And then, you know, from, from there, you know, we'll, we'll get on with it. But if any of you guys want to buy this RAM, from me. Yeah, if you want to make an offer for the bundle or you want to buy an individual stick, then let me know because part of the trade challenge, I am allowed to sell to you guys. So please do put an offer in on the um, trade challenge part of the Discord, right? There's a there's a whole sort of section of the Discord, the RMD Tech Discord for the trade challenge. There's a whole channel for it. So if you want to make an offer on anything you see here in this live stream, then be sure to uh, go put an offer in there. And actually, whilst we're on the subject, I'll show you the one other thing I got in the trade challenge. So uh, at the boot fair. So you guys will remember um, the last thing that I purchased for the trade challenge was an Xbox One. And I bought it for £60 out of the £70 budget that we had. And it was, well, let's say I thought it'd be a quick and easy sale on eBay, you know, putting us over £100. We actually, and you'll see this in the video that's due to come out, uh, we made a loss. I ended up selling it for £55. So we made a £5 loss on that. Um, partially because no one wanted it because we didn't have a controller. Um, and also the demand for an, an Xbox One that expensive just really wasn't there when the Xbox Series S is you know, not that much more expensive. So that was a real shame. Um, but we ended up selling that for a loss. But we did get to keep our um, the two games that came with it. So we got Gears of War 4 and Red Dead Redemption 2. That was not part of the £55 sale. And so we can still sell those on for maybe about £10 or so for both of them. So I'm pretty happy with that. So technically a £5 profit. Um, the only other thing to mention is the thing that I got to the boot fair, which is these. Yeah. <laughs> so I would have got more for the Xbox had I had a controller. I didn't have one. But now we do, right? So I spent £15 at the boot fair and got two disgustingly dirty Xbox One controllers. As far as I can tell, they both seem to be in okay condition, right? There's the sticks, the like joysticks aren't sticking. They seem like they might actually work. Um, so you can see that there, that's one, that's the other one. The guy selling them did have three, 
and I only bought two um, for seven pound fifty each because on the he had and he had another white one and the reason I didn't buy the other white one was because one of the joysticks was just stuck to the left and wasn't budging like you could move it but then it would it would get stuck again so I wasn't too confident on that one he said they were all working so fingers crossed right but we're gonna we, we'll, we'll test these out as well and hopefully these work as well and if they do then we can sell them on and maybe get 20 pounds each which will be a 25 pound profit and then if they don't work we'll sell them as 40 and make our money back in theory we should get 15 pounds for two 40 xbox controllers i don't doubt that whatsoever so pretty good deal i'm happy with that anyway let's get on with some more testing right so what have we got here we've got some corsair right what was this corsair extreme performance ddr2 memory look at that and i'm pretty sure i saw matching a matching set for this so let's let's go digging Maybe not. Oh, wait. I found the other one of the other team group stick. Let's test it in dual channel. We can do that now. There we go. Look, let's test it in dual channel. All right, we'll do that here. So. There we go. That's one stick. And that's two sticks. Right, and let's power that on. Now, to give you an idea of how reliable this system is and how inappropriate it is for what we're doing right now, this is the motherboard from the Wish PC video. <laughs> it's not a reliable motherboard. It's from the Wish PC. So um, make of that what you will. Throwback right there. Yeah, Pavel's just, so just looking in the chat. Pavel's saying that he, there's, an exp there's a Windows app for testing the Xbox controllers. And yes, I am aware. And that's essentially what I plan on doing. Because obviously I don't have the Xbox anymore to test them with. Which is what I otherwise would have tested them on. But because I sold the Xbox and I don't have my own one to test it on, I'm going to have to test it via Bluetooth on a Windows PC. Bit of a pain in the ass. But let's um, see if we can get into BIOS. Here we go. Total memory, 4 gigabytes. I thought these were... No, no, they're not one gigabyte sticks. Sorry, I thought these were one gigabyte sticks. They're actually two gigabyte sticks. So that's showing four gigabytes. That's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to see. So we're in a good position. Right. Let's turn that off. There we go. So. There we go. And that is our first set of working RAM. So just... If someone could do us a favor, right? Do me a favor, someone go have a look on eBay and see how much you can get for two two gigabyte sticks of DDR4, that's a DDR2 RAM. And let me know in, in the chat how much I can expect to get for the sale of these two sticks, right? My guess is a couple pounds, maybe five pounds on eBay, including postage. Which, you know, that's the amount we spent on this bundle, which, you know, is a very, very good start. So I'm happy with that based on how much we've we've got here in this pile. So if someone could have a look on eBay for me, obviously UK eBay, don't look on American or Canadian eBay, not useful. Look on UK eBay and let me know how much roughly that that sort of thing's selling for. Anyway, let's have a look, right? Let's... Let's have a Suji Muji around and see what we pick up. I don't know if I can test these actually because I think these are ECC. I know that I think th this heatsink is usually for server RAM, so I don't know if we'll be able to test that today. But anyway, let's have a looky looky. Ready? I'm not going to look, I'm going to cover my eyes and. What's this? DDR3. Right, I'm going I'm to make a separate pile of DDR3 so that. We don't try and test that. We'll try again. You ready? And what we're going to get... What's this? That server RAM. Can't do that. <laughs> ready? And here we go. What's this? Oh, that might be DDR1. No, it's DDR2. Excellent. Okay. It's all Buffalo Select. Anyone ever heard of Buffalo Select? Not a brand I've heard of, but it's one gigabyte of DDR2. Do we have a matching one? What's this? That looks similar, but no. Close, but no cigar. 
Okay, I think we're testing one gigabyte stick of Buffalo DDR2. Okay, 667 megahertz. Let's test it out. Also, just so you know, we're not still in the in the BIOS. It just won't recognize no input, so it stays on nothing. It's, a very, it's very annoying, I, I appreciate, but not much I can do about it, I'm afraid. So we'll get this installed. There we go. So yeah, unfortunately, because this is from the Wish PC, the the clips on the side of the, the, the dim socket aren't fantastic. They don't clip it in properly, so I have to really sort of push it in to uh, make a proper connection there. Not not fantastic stuff. But we're getting a post, which is good. Memory testing, okay. That's reassuring. We'll see if it goes into BIOS this time. It might not. Sometimes it just gets stuck through no fault of the RAM, just from the fact it's a really shitty motherboard. Um, no, it's not looking like it's going to do it. We'll restart it just in case, just to double check. I don't think we'll put in this much effort for all of them, but just as we get started, why not, right? And um, let's, whilst I'm spamming delete to get into BIOS, let's have a look at chat. Okay, so Pavel's saying CEX will give us 20 pence. That's not reassuring. Um, Psycho, one of the mods on the Discord, saying four to nine pounds. That's... <laughs> If I can get nine pounds for that, I'll be over the moon. That's you know almost doubling our money with two sticks. That's very impressive. Um, and then yeah, in the BIOS we're showing one gig of memory, so that's perfect. So that can go in the working pile as well. Um, Icarvi is saying two to four pounds. Okay, that's yeah, that's more than line with what I was expecting. Matt's saying depending on frequency, timings, voltage, some some extreme overclockers might be willing to pay more. Um, so Matt's saying if it looks like DDR1 but it is DDR2 it could be Micron fat body which is very highly sought after for extreme overclocking okay Matt well look if that's the case how do I tell tell me how I work that out because oh well that is DDR that is actually DDR1 um, and this is again DDR yes yeah, so I'm looking at a couple which I'm thinking oh that looks like DDR1 and then I'm picking it up and it is actually DDR1, which is a shame because if if DDR2, which looks like DDR1, is very sought after, then I'd like some of that in here. But I, I'm guessing I'm probably not going to get it. This, yeah, again, this looks like DDR1. Uh, oh, it's Buffalo Select again, but it is DDR1. It's not DDR2. So we'll put that in the uh, pile of DDR2 as well. And we'll take out some of these server uh, sticks as well put that in the pile to not test it today there we go take those out and we'll put those to one side okay right then so let's test out our next stick mm. have some water from my high sense water bottle my LTT store water bottle I've put it to one side for now because I've got the old one the old design which doesn't have the sippy lid and I like sippy lids so my high sense bottle is what I'm is what I'm running with at the moment it's one I got for free at work if you don't know I work for curries so I work selling TVs and as a result some of the reps give me brand merch like high sense water bottles right okay let's uh, let's do a lucky dip again ready let's stop in three two one What's this? Oh, I like the colour of this. It's like a nice little blue colour. It's like an RMD tech one. DDR3. Of course it is. Right, we'll try that again. We've got quite a lot of DDR3 here. This is good. I like I like DDR3. It's reassuring. Right, this is low profile RAM. It's a kit of two, but it is... Doesn't actually... It's a one gigabyte stick. Doesn't make it obvious as to what type it is, whether it's DDR2 or 3. So I'm just going to quickly test fit it in the motherboard, see if it fits. If it does, then it's DDR2. It is DDR2. Right, do we have a matching one? We've got some more low profile here. What's this? That's not the same set. Anyone see any else? Do we see any others, anyone? What's this? Oh, actually, hang on. I think these two might go together. No, no, that's not the same. Never mind. But they're similar. They're similar. Oh, here we go. Oh, never mind. Um, 
Right, so these, sorry, let me point back down. These two seem to go together. I think they look identical. They're both two gigabyte sticks. So maybe we'll go with those. We'll go, we'll test those out. Yeah. So we'll take this unlucky cell out. This one gigabyte stick, which looks very similar, but isn't quite the same. Um, and then we'll put these, these two in. Yeah. I think that sounds like a plan. Right, that's that should be four gigabytes of RAM in there. Let's see what happens. Right, does anyone anyone know? Does does low profile DDR2 sell for more than standard profile? Is that what it's called? Standard profile? I don't know. Um, I don't actually know. I've never looked at it, but I wouldn't think so. So if anyone knows, let me know in chat. I wouldn't, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't think it does. Um, we don't seem to be getting a post. No, this might be our first faulty RAM. Let's have a look. We've got it in dual channel though, so let's see. It might be one of them's not seated properly. Like I say, the slots aren't fantastic. But let's have a look. But we might have our first faulty stick. Which would be a shame. Right, let's try it with one and see if that posts. It's definitely warm. It's warm to the touch. That might be that might be the issue. Okay, let's have a look. Is it gonna work? Yeah, there we go. So it looks like this stick here might be dead. I'll try reseating it. We'll see if it works if I reseat it. But it's not a good start. It's definitely not a good start. Oh, it would help if I put it in the right way. Right, there we go. Right, let's try it again. I might have just, you know, it might have been bad contact the first time. Who knows? But, are we ready? Let's uh, re-angle. Fingers crossed, everyone. No. No, so it's looking like that stick's dead. Yeah, definitely. Definitely a dead stick. So, we'll put it in the... Um, in the bad stick pile um, but you know as Matt says I'll try it with a bit of contact cleaner you, ne you never know right we might be able to get it working so this stick comes out off it goes ready Bam! dead should get a beep speaker do you know what actually Pavel I think I've got one I think well, I know I've got one. It's just, where is it? Right, it should be, I'm sorry, I'm just looking in a drawer at the moment, which is where I tend to keep that sort of thing. If I can find it quickly, I'll plug it in for us. Loads of SATA cables. We've got all sorts in here, but I can't see a beeper. No, can't see it in there. Yeah, but that would have been a good idea, actually. Yeah, should have plugged in a beeper. I don't have a postcode reader, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, we'll have to go without for now, unfortunately. Who have we got in here? Oh, we got we got some people from my uni as well. There we go. We got some extra. We got some extra faces. Got some familiar faces in here. And hey, no, sorry, I've just seen Psycho, one of my mods, saying with it. It's the random crap drawer. I'll have you know it's not a random crap drawer, all right? It's actually a drawer full of PC cables and parts. It's not actually parts. It's mostly just PC cables. But that's where it would have been. It's not random crap, all right? All right there's a method to the madness. Right, let's have a look. What have we got going on? Let's 
So I'm just having a look at some of these low profile sets now. Um, they're not identical, are they? No, they're very similar, but not quite the same. So we'll go, actually, let's have a look at these. I want to look at these. What's this? It's DDR3, of course it is. DDR3, of course it is. All right, going in the DDR3 pile. Right, but here, this is what we're looking for. This is a matching set. We've got matching RAM, people. Make sure. Both 2 gigabyte sticks, both 800 megahertz. Yep, yeah, exact same timings. Yeah, these are these are matching sets. So these two go together. They were made together. We'll put them. We'll put them in the machine together. Right, and then the working stick from that previous bundle we'll put in our working drawer or working box, and we'll test out these two sticks. Okie dokie. Oh, I don't like this. It's making me so uncomfortable. The motherboard's flexing so much as I put these in. Oh, that, oh, oh, that's not good. I put it in the wrong way. <laughs> right, I need to look. Lesson learned. Look which direction I'm putting the RAM stick in. Because that's obviously going to bend the motherboard if I do that. Right, there we go. Line that up. Push it down. Right, that's two sticks. That should be in. Let's go. And fingers crossed, that posts. Is there one way to find out? Okay, there we go. Right, so that's... Oh, I missed it. I didn't get into BIOS. Hang on, let's restart. So I'm thinking that should be four gigs showing on the BIOS. Should be four gigs. Let's have a look. Spamming delete. Ready, entering setup. Okay. Four gigs showing. Yeah, we're all okay. There we go. So that's more working RAM. So in theory then, based on the four to nine pound sales range that was predicted by chat, that gives us, at the worst, let's say four pounds, we've got what let's say let's say we just go for the two four gigabyte sets that's eight pounds that's a three pound profit assuming no fees no postage charges obviously we're gonna have to account for that um but we're gonna sell enough of them that hopefully you know we'll put it together as a bundle and that'll become a bit more neg negligible so we should be okay anyway Let's pick out the next one. Anyone want to make any? Pre anyone got any preferences as to where we go? We got some nice orange sticks in here. We've got actually—is that it's going to be DDR3, isn't it? No, it's DDR2. If you want to test out an orange stick, although it is that server stuff. So, is it ECC? I don't know how I how I'd know if it was ECC based on it's SK Hynix by the looks of things. At least it's an SK Hynix heatsink on it. I think this is probably ECC, but if anyone knows a good way of working it out, let me know, and then that makes my life a lot easier. So someone go Google that for me, right? That's that's your job. Um, we've got another low profile one here. What's this? This looks interesting. Some more team group, but it's DDR3. Of course it is, DDR3, right? In the DDR3 pile. What's this? Got a black PCB, that's posh. DDR3 again. There we go, how many gigs is it? It's two gigs. It's got a lot of two gig DDR3s. This is a, I know this, this is this was on the top and what caught my attention, it was this G Skills. Because I like G Skill, right? This is a, these are really nice sticks around these. Um, and this is a four gigabyte stick, but it's DDR3, so we're not testing it today. All right. Pavel's saying the uh, metallic blue looks looks pretty cool. Let's have a look. Metallic blue, so, oh, well, that's probably the G Skill one. Unless you want to go for, what's this? XL RAM. Oh, here we go. So this is part of a, two, a four gigabyte set. It's XL RAM. It's definitely DDR2. Have we got the other matching stick around somewhere? It doesn't look like it. It would stand out like a sore thumb, really, wouldn't it? Um, but I did notice um, Psycho saying the Corsair RAM that we've got, apparently, these are worth 15 quid. Don't mind if I do. Yeah, okay, if I can get 15 quid for that, I'll be very happy. That would be three times the amount we paid for this bundle. So, considering I can't find the other half of this, we'll test this on its own. 
unless I can, you know, if I find the other one in this pile at some point, we'll get it back out and we'll retest it. But on its own, let's test this. Right, in it goes. Let's uh, show you guys what I'm doing. There we go, I've got it in the right way round this time. All right, there we go. And then power on. Let's have a look. Oh, power on. There we go, Mr. Button. All right, and are we going to get an output on the screen? And Pavel, I'm telling you now, we are not finding DDR5 in this in this haul. And there we go. Right, so it's found it. It's showing the two gigs that we're expecting. That's perfect. Right, that's a working stick of RAM. We can chuck that in the working pile. Anyone got any estimations for how much we're going to get? out of this, how much the value of this bundle is going to be. Let's have a look. Wow, oh, that is cool looking. It's DDR3, but let me show you this stick around because the PCB on this, this is cool. Right, I like this. Look at that, that gold on there, that's not like part of a heatsink. That is just straight on the PCB. It's not like scratch drafting, that is like, that's a really cool design. I like that. Does anyone, what's it called? It's the brand is Geel, right? G E I L, G E I L. Has anyone heard of that brand before? They've got their logo printed on the actual um, RAM chips there as well. So don't know what's going on there. But if anyone knows if this is worth anything, I've never seen anything like that before. Let me know. But we'll put that in the DDR3 part anyway. Let me have some more water because I think I'm starting to get a bit of a headache. Alright, let's have a look. Um, what's, what's Matt saying? Once you're done here, if you can post pictures of the RAM kits you have, I can give you a better idea if the extreme overclocking community might be interested. Yeah, I can, I can post some pictures. Well, I'm going to have to post pictures anyway. Um, you know, I'm definitely going to have to post the pictures on the trade challenge uh, thread on discord the, the channel just uh, continuity sake um, but Pavel's saying a pair is going for 30 pounds on ebay a, i can't remember what i asked for a pair of what because if there's some oh here is the other here's the other geel geel stick with the fancy pcb is that what's going for 30 pounds if that's going for 30 pounds oh, i'm going to be over the bloody moon for four gigabytes of RAM, I wouldn't pay thirty pounds. But if someone's going to, then that's brilliant. Oh, really? Pavel saying the the Geo Guile, whatever it is, RAM is going for thirty pounds. And Kartik, Kartik in the chat is asking for a. Oh yeah! <laughs> there you go. You got one. <laughs> I can't believe I did that on the live stream. Bloody hell! Life has gone downhill. Life has gone very downhill. Right, this RAM is covered in sellotape. What is it? Uh, DDR2, two gigabytes. Signature RAM. Ooh, signature. Patriot chips as well. Should we give this one a test? Let's give this a test. Oh, actually, before we give that a test, I found some more CPUs. There's some CPUs at the bottom of this pile. We have our first AMD CPU, ready, right? Who wants to place bets before you see it, right? Here's, here's the pin layout, right? Before you see the other side and find out what chip this is, does anyone want to make any guesses in the chat as to what this is, right? I, I don't know yet. The pins don't, ah, right, update. It doesn't matter what it is because it's fucked. <laughs> Those pins, are not looking healthy. I don't think you. I don't think this camera is going to pick it up, um, but that's going to take a lot of work. There's there's a lot of bent pins here, guys. But this was at one point an Athlon two. There we go. That's not even really showing on the camera, but it's an Athlon two. That's all I know. And then we've got an E five. 320 e5 320 fucked absolutely fucked that's a shame because that might have got a couple of quid maybe maybe 
Maybe just a couple. Anyway, let's keep on looking, shall we? Should we do some soul searching? Soul searching in the pile. Actually, no, we were, there was one we found, wasn't there? There was, oh yeah, the um, sellotape stick. There you go, we'll test the sellotape stick. Let's do that. So, here we go. Back in the board. This Wish motherboard is getting more use than it was ever supposed to get, right? This thing was made to go in the landfill, and I am using it and abusing it by filling it with hundreds of sticks of RAM to test them all out. But, unfortunately, all my others are stuck in PCs, right? All my, like, right, here's the thing, right? I was originally, right, for this live stream, I wanted to do all of this testing on one of my LAN party motherboards, right? This is a DDR2 LAN party motherboard, which I bought not working. Um, it, was un it, was it was sold as untested. However, I got it. I got it home, and you know, I, I plugged it all in, and it worked fine. It worked fine. It was brilliant, and I loved it. And this is one of my favourite motherboards I've ever owned. However, it just seems to have stopped working. Right? I, I plugged it in to do all this testing, and it it was dead. So unfortunately, we get the Wish PC motherboard instead because that's what I've got. Uh, I'm also gonna very quickly adjust the camera focus because I think we are very slightly out of focus. Is that? Someone tell me if that's better or not. I'm not sure. Because the thing is, I would have... This is all running off my DSLR, but because it's um, a shit DSLR, I if I turn on autofocus, you get this box around me like this, right? So it, I, it, I look nicer in the sense of, you know, I'm in focus. However, it now means that you have to put up with a box everywhere. So I have to turn off autofocus to get around that so I'm gonna have to run very quickly and let me stay here and very quickly try and turn that off okay you ready and oh right okay it's back on manual focus and I think we're more or less still in focus there um right let's have a look so what's the chat saying um <laughs> okay so there's some there's some demands for over vote oh Overvolting the RAM. Um, a, I don't think this motherboard's going to allow me. I haven't checked, but I assume it won't. Um, and B, no, right, no, <laughs> because I need to make a profit on this. And if I start breaking it for shits and giggles, that's never going to happen. Anyway, let's have a look. Um... <laughs> yeah, okay. So we've got. Oh, what's going on? Okay, we've just got some general chit-chat about AM3, FM3. So we'll, we'll ignore that for now. Mm. Yeah, there's more CPUs in here than I realised. Okay. Oh, actually, did this... We turned this on. Did it ever... Did it do anything? I don't think it did, did it? It doesn't seem like it's doing anything. Because, yeah, it's... Uh, I've turned it on just now. We've got no post. Yeah, nothing. Okay, it's going in the broken bin. Going in the broken bin. You had your chance. Out it comes. You ready for the ceremonial? Bam! Oh, and it hit the other one. <laughs> oh, I really hope they are genuinely broken because they're not going to work now. There's no way that's working. I've just smashed it with another RAM chip. Right. Okay, what else have we got? Lots of grass, right? Look, look at this, grass from inside the uh, box it came in. Because obviously it's sold at a boot fair where everything's just on the ground. Oh, what's this, here we go. Oh, more Buffalo Select. Is this DDR? Well, it must be DDR1. See, it says, oh no, sorry. I got really confused there because I saw PC3, right, which is means DDR3 and I was looking at this thinking there's no there's no way that's DDR3 no it's PC3200 uh, it's still DDR1 RAM so that's useless for us useless it's almost worthless um, we've got some interesting questions going on in the chat we actually no, no, let's answer them would you rather fight a horse-sized duck or a hundred duck-sized horses 
definitely a hundred duck sized horses because if I had to fight a ho horse sized duck it would just eat me in one go right their beaks are huge so I would it would just eat me no question about it a hundred duck sized horses I think I could just curb stomp them I think we'd be fine so 100% definitely a hundred duck sized horses without question a hundred that's a lot but I think we'd be okay. It depends on how they attacked, right? Because if they've got the intelligence of a horse, I think we'd be fine. Right. Let's have a look. DDR3. Can't test it. And I want something fancy looking. I want something nice. What's this? This looks like DDR. It is DDR. Can't test that today. And this looks like DDR2. So... When I say DDR2, I mean it also it also looks like DDR, not it's DDR2. And it is DDR. So we can't use that. More Buffalo Select. Never heard of them before today, but now they are my new best friend by the sounds of things. Very dusty, this one. Uh, but it is DDR2. It's one gig. What was the other one we had? That was also one gig. It looks identical. They're both CL5 sticks. Uh, 667 uh, megahertz. Um, yeah, these look pretty identical to me. So I tested one. I tested this one, and I know it's working. So I'm going to test this one as well. See if we can put them in dual channel. And if it works in dual channel, then hey, then that's great. Oh, this is going to take forever, guys. We are going to be here a long time. And I'll tell you now, I don't intend to do all of this on live stream because no one is going to watch it. I'm surprised you guys are here watching this, right? Because as live streams go, plugging in RAM sticks and seeing if they work or not is not the most interesting of live streams. But we'll see if we get a post here. And yet we've got a post. So that's, that's acting weird. Why is it doing that? It's not supposed to do that. Is that because of the RAM? I don't know. I don't know if I want to know. Let's try it. Let's just repost it. That's. I've never seen that before. Does anyone know what that means? Let's 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 try getting into BIOS. Okay, so maybe maybe this one doesn't work. It's acting weird. I'm not saying that's totally normal, but it's not letting me into BIOS. And I appreciate this is a shitty motherboard, but that's not, it's not filling me with confidence. Okay, prepare to enter setup. Memory runs at single channel. We've got two sticks in there. I don't think it's detecting the second stick. That's interesting. That is certainly interesting. Right, I'm gonna try taking it out and putting it back in. I'm gonna try reseating it quickly. Right, because this is the one that's seemingly not working. It's this one here. Um, it's very, very dusty, very dusty. Contacts all look pretty clean. There's no obvious signs of corrosion, dust, or dirt on the actual contacts. Um, I'll give it a quick blow. No one clipped that. All right, let's test it again, see what happens. I think I've, I've definitely seated that properly, though. So if it doesn't, if it doesn't work, then who knows? Oh, here we go, dual channel. There we go. All right, it was just not seated properly. Um, yeah, and we got two gigabytes detected. There's two one gigabyte sticks. 
The Rams fine. We're okay, everyone. We're okay. That's another working set of Buffalo Select Ram. Look at that. We are making progress, people. We are making progress. All right. So we've got some... We The success rate is very good. Because like Matt says, right, DDR2 Ram is very resi like resilient. So... Like, I'm, I'm not overly surprised that so much of this is working. Not at all. Oh, what's this? That's an interesting looking PCV. What have we got here? That's I'll show you guys what I'm looking at. So this is DDR2. It's SK Hynix. It's one gigabyte. It's from an HP system. But I think that looks kind of nifty. Like I like all the etchings on it. I think it looks cool. Um, but I want to test something that looks more cool. So, have we got anything exciting in here? Or are we reduced to just green PCB shit? We've got some laptop RAM. What's this? Two gigabytes so dim of, oh, just flat DDR. Oh no, oh no, it's not flat. No, never mind, ignore me. It's two gigabytes of DDR2 laptop RAM. Is that worth anything? I would assume not, right? I have no way of testing it either. So I would assume that's not worth anything. But I'm gonna test this stuff, right? This this Patriot memory? Yeah, Patriot memory. Um, DDR3, of course it is. Is all of it DDR3 or is there some DDR2? And that DDR3 again. Come on, give me some DDR2 stuff. DDR3 again. Is there any Patriot memory that's DDR2? What's this OCZ stuff? What's this? Oh, it is DDR2. Excellent. Okay, that's a one gigabyte stick, I think. That's a one gigabyte stick of uh, OCZ. And what's this? We've got another Gale, Gale, Gale one. That's DDR3 as well. Of course, it's brushed titanium is what that's claiming to be. Yeah, laptop DDR2 RAM around two pounds. So not very valuable because I'm assuming that's including postage as well. That's, you know, three pound 20 is a standard parcel. So I'd lose money posting it that way. It would need to be as a letter and that would be, I think 95 pence, I think it costs now. So we can make about a maximum of a pound on that if we sold it individually. Yeah, so that's a very good idea from Psycho Sovet. So idea for the dead RAM is to drill a hole and turn it into a key ring. It's actually something I used to do myself. I used to have a key ring. Let me see if I've still got it. Yeah. So you can see, I can show you exactly what Psycho means because this is what I used to have on my keys, right? Is my key ring. So I'll show it on this camera, actually. You probably get a better idea of what it looks like. Is this that, right? So it's basically just a, what is this? Yes, this is a two gigabyte stick of DDR2 RAM. It worked at the time I did this, but it already had a hole pre-drilled in it. All I did was thread the key ring on and bish bash bosh, there's a key ring. I thought it was pretty cool. I, it's definitely an acquired taste, but I like it. Not enough to keep using it. I don't. I don't use it anymore. But hey, it was cool at the time. Right. So, have we got? Oh, give me something interesting. Oh, we've got a black PCB. Yeah, we don't get many of those. Uh, of course, DDR three again. So we've got more DDR three than I was expecting, to be honest. Oh, there's some more Patriot memory. Is it DDR2 or 3? DDR3, of course it is. Got some more team group elite memory. I think we that was one. I think that was the first thing we tested that was some of this. Uh, but it's looking like. We're running out of things which are obviously interesting. I found some more DDR3 to put in the pile. Um, what's this here? Like a random case. 
Ow! Ah, uh, that's that must have broken something. Um, yeah, we've got a random cable there. Let me actually. Oh, what? Yeah, why don't I? Let's just change the camera quickly. Let's. Yeah, you can see it a bit better like that, can't you? I think you, you should still be able to hear me. I think. So you can see a little bit better here what we've got going on. So this is the huge pile of RAM. You can see it full screen now. I hope you can still hear me. Let me know if you can't. I'm sure someone will say something. Um, got some more laptop RAM here. Oh, it's Corsair Value Select. Nice one. What is it though? Is that, I see 512 on there. Is that 512 megabytes? Is that what that is? I don't know. Got some more seller tape on this one. Elixir. Yeah, we've got people saying they can still hear, so we're okay. We're all okay. Some more DDR3. Maybe it might be worth getting a DDR3 test bench out because we're getting more than I thought. More DDR3. That's DDR2. Okay. So, let's have a look. What's this? Is this? Oh, these are identical, I think. I think these are the same. What have we got? One gigabyte of DDR2. One gigabyte of DDR2. Yeah. Okay, right. Let's test these two then. And let's give it a test. Yeah, so so I've just seen someone commenting on how much RAM there is. So I take it just joining in. So for those which are just joining, this is my haul of RAM from the boot fair. This is basically part of my 2022 trading challenge in which I started out with a random desktop PC, an old office PC that was worth very little, and I am trading it up to the aim of a gaming PC, or at least some way of doing proper gaming. We had an Xbox One, we have traded that, we sold it for £55. I have spent 15, no, I spent £20 of that budget, 15 on the Xbox controllers, five on this on this bundle of goodies. And now we are essentially testing all the RAM that we got in that bundle to find out whether or not it all works. And it's looking, oh, I see it's saying it's running a single channel again. Is it because that these RAM slots are fucked and it's not seeded properly? Probably yes. So we're gonna try a quick reseed. But if it is broken, then, well, it's broken. There's not much I can do about it. All right, I'm gonna take that back out. Give it a quick rub down. Reseat it. Hopefully that works. Let's try it again. Yeah, exactly. So we're selling off all the RAM that works. So if anyone is watching the live stream or is a part of the community and wants any of the RAM they see in this live stream, you know, be it as a whole bundle, as it as a single stick, whatever, let me know in the Discord and I'm sure we can work out some sort of deal. Um, yeah, it's all going to be cheap, right? It's all going to be cheap. Right, that's still not working. I don't know which stick is not working, so we'll quickly reseat the other one as well. We'll give it a quick wipe down. I appreciate this is not best practice, but it's a quick and dirty live stream. So it's all you're gonna get from me today, I'm afraid. Let's do it one last time before we admit defeat. Yeah, it's still saying running at single channel. Oh, but it might be seen because it's showing two gigabytes there. So that means it might actually work, right? That's a, that's a good point. 
Might not be dual channel memory. Might not. Well, it's part of the same kit. Well, I don't know. Let's see. Let's see. We'll get into get into BIOS, but it's not letting me. <laughs> uh, testing RAM with a motherboard from Wish. Right. I'm going to tell you now. I'm not recommending it. Not recommending it whatsoever. We'll restart again. Back into BIOS. Yeah, well, Pavel, look, mate, if you want the DDR3, you know, if you're expressing interest in the DDR3, then maybe we can sort you something out. It's not going to be big sticks, though. I think the biggest I've found so far is four gigabytes. We're not going to find anything. I don't think there's going to be anything bigger than that. It's all going to be one, two, or four. Um, but it's looking like this RAM's going to have to go in the broken pile, I'm afraid. Doesn't seem to be working. Someone's asking what the GPU is, so let's have a look. Yeah, right. Whilst I turn this system off, let's have a look at the GPU on this bad boy. So this GPU here, don't actually know. In fairness, didn't come as part of this bundle. This is one of my own ones. It's just so I have a display out on this motherboard you know, because it doesn't come with one. Well, other than a VGA, and that's not particularly useful for. Okay, let's uh, put the RAM in the broken box. Yeah, VGA was not particularly useful for this live stream, so I needed this, which had DVI, which I could adapt to HDMI nice and easily. Um, but in, to answer your question, I don't know what this is. My guess is an HD 5450. That's usually what I've got a butt ton of. It looks looks the part, so probably an HD 5450. Um, but anyway, let's, let's have a look at the RAM part, shall we? Let's pick out some RAM. Okay, right. Anyone want to tell me when to stop, right? We're going to pick out some RAM and here we go. Right, blue stick. Pick DDR3. Can't use it, right? Back in the RAM bad pile. Right, we'll use that for another test another day. And we'll come on down again. And here we go. So, pick out a RAM stick and not looking. And there we go. Right, what have we got? So, DDR2. So we've got one gigabyte of LP to DDR2. Have we got anything to match? Can we see anything? These two are stuck together. That's not reassuring, but we have got some Kingston over here. Two gigabytes of Kingston. That seems more interesting. And we've got some Samsung over here as well. So we've got some interesting bits going on. Um, oh, we've got some new people in. We've got accountant sheet. Hello, hello. And then we've also got Wes saying, what's the weirdest PC case you've had? Mine was an Orange Transformer case 2009. Um, I do have a really weird PC case. There's a video that I've been planning to do for, oh, I got it 2020. And let's go back to the other camera quickly. Let's go back. So, right. Actually, let's see if we can go. Yeah, there we go. So, I'll very briefly explain, even though I'm not in focus, about the weirdest PC, PC case I've ever had. So, it was a PC case that I got on Facebook Marketplace. And it, I bought it, oh, it must have been early 2021, I want to say. And, I, and there's a, there's one of my Discord mods is very passionate about this case. And it's actually how he discovered the channel. Uh, because I had no idea what this case was. I loved it. I really wanted it. And I thought, this is the coolest case ever. But, and the big thing is the but, I could not find any reference to it anywhere on the internet whatsoever. So in the end, I posted on Reddit, on Twitter, on Google, everywhere I could find for someone who could identify this case. I reached out to companies. In the end, I, I ended up speaking to the CEO of a, was it a Swedish PC case manufacturer from the mid 2000s, which ended up getting dissolved. I think it was Swedish. Anyway, I spoke to the CEO of this company and he, you know, he was a really nice guy. I forgot to reply to him though. Um, and in the end, it was one of my Discord mods which was able to identify it. So let me see if I've, I mean, I've got it down here, but it's a right pain in the ass to get out. Um, let me see if I can find a picture of it on Google and I'll, I'll show you guys. Yes, if you Google the name of the PC case, it's a Berserk 550, I believe is what it's called. Um, if you Google it, the pictures that come up are actually from me trying to find it rather than actual, like, a source on Google but here it is right it's not a very high quality picture so you have to forgive me 
this is the PC case, right? So it looks pretty standard, right? Not the most interesting thing in the world, but it's got a panel on the front, which I love. I love a good LED panel. The panel caps out at 2019, so you can't, it has a date on it, right? So you can't set the date on the PC case to anything after 2019. It's completely useless nowadays. It makes the cutest noise when you turn it on. It makes a little beeping of going, boop, 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 boop. love it. And it's, it's just such a beautiful case. I love it to pieces. I adore it. It's, I think it's the favorite, my favorite case I own. It's really weird. Um, yeah, it's very, very obscure. Very few people have ever owned one, seen one. So the fact that I've got one, well, I, I consider it my little piece of weird history because it was only ever sold, I believe, in Northern Europe, mostly in Scandinavia. So the fact I've got one here, really chuffed with it because no one in Asia is going to have one. No one in, in America is going to have one. It's just Northern Europe, which as far as I'm aware, ever had these cases sold. Um, yeah, exactly. The Berserk 550 case, but the Berserk is spelled B-Z-E-R-K rather than Berserk as it would normally be spelled. Um, and yes, it is a little lifting handle. So it comes with a handle uh, built into it. How cool is that? Uh, people are asking for a, a, a sneak peek. So I'll get it out. All right. I'll get it out. So here it is. I'm planning on using it for a video on the Ultimate Windows Vista PC. I want to do an Ultimate Windows Vista PC. Here it is. So, see we've got the carry case, we've got some bits on it that I'm intending to use as part of the restoration. Um, but ready? Let's lift it up. Can you see? There's the case, right? That's it. It's really heavy though. And things are falling off the top. So that's, if I can reach. That's my favourite case that I own. I absolutely love it. Um, and the, uh, the only reason I don't use it as my main PC case is because it is so ugly. It is one of the ugliest cases I have ever, ever had the displeasure of using. And it's also really rusty. So that's part. Of, that's, that was going to be another part of the videos. You know, fixing up the dead LEDs, replacing the rusty screws, just making it making it feel like it belongs in the 22nd, 22nd, 21st century a little bit more. Anyway, we'll put that back under there and crack on with some RAM testing, shall we? Right, let's have a look. So, no, 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 I didn't spray paint it. So it came in two colors. It came in black and it came in silver. I've got the black one. Um, yeah, Pavel loves it. Of course he loves it. It's great. Everyone loves it. Um, and yeah, he, Psycho saying it does look oh, Windows Vista Ultimate Sleeper PC. Maybe that would be it. That would be a pretty cool video, I think. So maybe we could do that. Anyway, we're supposed to be doing RAM testing. Let's do some RAM testing, shall we? Right, here we go. Let's pick out some RAM. Are we ready? Are we ready? And right, what have we got? Right, which of these looks interesting? We've got Crucial, we've got Samsung, we've got Kingston. So which is the biggest? We'll go with the biggest. They are all one gigabyte. So we'll test out the Crucial stuff because I like Crucial. I think Crucial is a good brand. Uh, yeah, server stuff, so I can put that to one side. Uh, anything else that looks interesting? No. Have we got a matching stick anywhere? Obviously. I can't see any. No, so we'll test it single channel, I think. Oh, actually, what's this? This might be a matching. No, I don't. Oh, hang on. One gigabyte DDR2. Uh, I don't think they are identical, no, but we will to speed up the process, test them at the same time anyway, because I just like to live on the edge, right? You never know. They might work together. They should work together, right? It's a Wish PC motherboard, right? This motherboard came from the high quality Wish PC, and we all know exactly how well that went, and we all know how exactly how well that motherboard performed. The answer, if you don't know, shockingly, it didn't turn on. But it now works for some reason, and so it works for our hardware testing. I can't think of anything more reliable to do this with. Okay, are we going to see any progress? Please turn on. This is not a good sign.
Yeah, so Pavel's saying about modding it with a new LCD screen to show like PC stats using either 64. I don't know. I feel like I like the existing screen. I don't think I can replicate it very well, and I really like it. My DIY skills, they're okay. I can do some things. You know, especially like IoT things, right? You know, uh, I did a whole module in it. At, at, uh, I did a whole IoT module at university. So I'm, I, you know, I can... I can use like um, Arduinos to convert things into like smart things. I can you know, do all that sort of stuff. Just don't think I do that particularly well because my techie side of my DIY stuff, great. My actual physical making it look nice and OEM, not so much. Um, but yeah, like my, my um, one of my university projects this year, I took a desk fan and I made it a smart desk fan. So it had like things like presence detection. It knew when you were nearby. It knew your preferences on like how hot or how cold you liked it. So it could change the fan speed accordingly. It was really cool. I really liked it. Um, but this PC is not booting. In fact, it's literally just turned itself back off. So ooh, it's turned itself back on. So we're going to retest it. And let's see what it does. Come on. All right, turn off, please. I'm going to be here for hours testing this. Guys, I'm not going to live stream all of it um, because it's going to be boring as shit if I try to do that. And also, I'm planning on going to the boot fair again tomorrow to see if I can pick up any more bargains. Um, if I do, I will obviously report back to you guys, let you know what I got. Uh, if it's if it's a lot, then maybe we'll do another live stream, test it all out on live stream. If not, then... I'll just do a quick update in the Discord. Um, yeah, cool. Okay, right, we've got a post. I saw a post. Yeah, there we go. So, one of at least one of those crucial sticks works. Now, it might be a case of they both work and they're just not compatible with each other. That is yet to be seen because they they're not identical, as I have already pointed out. Um, but I will chuck in the next one and see if it posts on its own. If it does, it will go in the working pile. If it doesn't, it will go in the dead pile. Okay, let's see what happens. Oh, what we've got? We've got Tech215 in the chat. I'm trying to record a roll my new 12700 KF video. My motivation is at 10%. What are the specs on this system? That was not where I thought that question was going to go. Um, if, however, so what are the specs on this system? So this is a Core 2 Duo 5000 series something. It's an HD 5450 graphics card, a Wish PC motherboard, and varying RAM depending on what I pick out from this pile. That's the specs. There's no hard drive, no Windows operating system. This stick of RAM is dead. It's going in the broken pile. But yeah, so not a particularly powerful PC, but we're testing DDR2 RAM, so what can you really expect, right? Here we go. So, going in the dead, bu de dead box. Ready? And ceremonial. Bam! But, and it's, <laughs> we're going through this so slowly because this is our working bin, right? And look at how much we've got still to go. Oh, we're going to be here a while, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, exactly. There's a, there's a lot of memory here, but you know, think of all the computers this RAM has been in, all the programs, the applications, these, these sticks of RAM has run. You know, the top secret government secrets that have been on this stick of RAM right here. You know, I'm sure very valuable stuff. I'm sure, like, <laughs> of course, it was probably like someone's NAND. Oh, wow, four gigabytes. Hang on. Sorry. <laughs> Completely sidetracked. I've just seen a four gigabyte stick. We, don't, we haven't had many of these. We've got a DDR4 stick. We've got. Oh, hang on. We've got a stick of DDR4. 
I did not see that coming. It's a stick of Lenovo DDR4. So we've got a four gig, yeah, PC4, four gigabytes. It's Lenovo, SK Hynix memory. That's, that's worth something. <laughs> we've got RAM that's worth something, people. We've made our money back, if it works. <laughs> I'll need a modern test bench. I'll need to put it in my own actually functioning computer rather than this sh shitty test bench. Well, that's made me happy. We're going to have to put it to one side because it's the most valuable thing we've got. And it's got a massive scratch on it. But it might still be okay. Might. I'm happy though. I'm happy we've at least got DDR4. I'm surprised. Maybe Pavel was right at the beginning of this live stream. Maybe we will have DDR5. And if we do, then I'll... Pavel, if we've got DDR5 RAM in here, I'm saying it now is on the record. If we have DDR5 RAM in here, I will blend up every last bit of this RAM, put it in a smoothie and drink it. Okay? That is my promise to you, Pavel. If there is a stick of DDR5 RAM in here, I will do that. It will go in the blender and I will drink it. All of it. Okay? That is my promise. All right. So, yeah, someone tell me, how much is a four gigabyte stick of DDR4 RAM worth? It's, it, there's no heatsink. It's plain PCB. It's bare basic four gigabytes of DDR4. But someone tell me, someone go on eBay right now and go let me know how much that's worth. My guess, and let me put a guess in. Because I don't. I'm going to say at m maybe a around the £10 mark, including shipping, is my guess. Around £10. CEX will give me £2. Right, that's a good thing, though, because CEX don't test their memory before they purchase it most of the time. So if I give that to CEX, whether it's working or not, I'm likely to get two quid for it. So that's probably what I'll do. If, if, if I test it and it's not working, then I'll probably take it to CEX. I'm sorry, that's a really scummy thing to do, but I need I, I need this trade challenge to work, right? We need it to work. 12 quid? Hey, I'll take 12. If, if it's working and I get 12 quid for it, that's doubling our money right there. So that's that's really good. Our, our investment for all of this was five pounds. So to get 12 quid for one of the sticks, that's pretty impressive, right? So, hey, this might be the most profitable trade in the entire cha trade challenge. And I bought it as a piss take. I didn't think this would be worth that much. How wrong was I? How very wrong was I? But maybe it's got like a matching one. Maybe there's like another four gigabyte stick in here somewhere. Guys, I promise you, <laughs> I am not taking the piss, right? It's not DDR5. So Pavel can calm down. It's not DDR5 RAM. But I saw this and thought, oh, there's no RAM chips on there. It must be like something cheap and shit. I turn it around. Not only do I see eight gigabytes, which is the biggest capacity stick we've seen so far, but it's eight gigabytes of DDR4. This entire time we have seen no DDR4. Within a minute, maybe two, we pick out two DDR4 sticks. We've got 12 gigabytes of DDR4 now. This is ridiculous. I paid five pounds for this. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, Pavel made a good point. You know, they also don't test their CPUs as well. So I'm not saying anything, you know. Maybe we could get rid of some of these CPUs with CEX. <laughs> not my problem if they don't work. Right, well, you know what I'm doing now, don't you guys? I'm I'm going out. I'm looking for all of the one-sided RAM, RAM sticks, right? I want to find more DDR4. So let's have a look. Let's see what we can find. Let's, uh, there we go. Yeah, 16 quid for the 8 gigabyte stick. Hey, I'll take it. What's this? DDR3. Shit. Got DDR4 in here now. That's what we care about. DDR2. Don't like it. DDR DDR two again. D 
DDR3, that can go in the DDR3 pile. DDR3 pile's getting pretty big now. Oh, I saw PC4 and 40 was DDR4. It's PC and then just 4200. It's DDR1. Damn it. I was so excited for a second then. DDR3. DDR2. Come on, give me more one sided chips. DDR2. DDR3. DDR3. Um, it's going to be DDR, isn't it? Yeah, DDR. Oh! Right, a one gigabyte stick of DDR is a. I think it was two gigabytes the maximum on DDR? This is a one gigabyte stick. If anyone can tell me how much a one gigabyte stick of DDR is worth, please, that would be fantastic. Because that's one gigabyte of DDR right there. DDR2 again. DDR2. Got standard DDR again. DDR3, riveting content. I'm aware, guys. I'm aware it's riveting. Right, you don't have to tell me. Keep yourselves calm. DDR3. Oh, this is. Wait, what? This is from Target, apparently. How did Target RAM end up in the UK? Hey, that's cool. More DDR3. Oh, there's another CPU. Oh, we got a CPU. It's another E5, E5000 series. It's worthless. Not worth anything. DDR3 again. DDR3 again. So we're getting a lot of DDR3 here, guys. A lot of DDR3. More DDR3. More DDR2. DDR3. All right, I think we might have hit the end of our luck here, everyone. Doesn't look like we're gonna get any more DDR4 today. But hey, two gigabytes, so two DDR4 sticks is very impressive, but I'm um, as embarrassing this is as this is, guys. Right, as embarrassing as it is, we're on a live stream, but I'm only human, and I've drunk this much water, so you can guess where I'm going. I'm not going to say where I'm going, but I've drunk this much water. I'm only human. I have the bladder of a child. You can guess where I'm going okay and yes psycho you're right it should have been a DDR3 based system right I can see how many people are watching right now when I come back you better all still be here okay you're all gonna be here and if you're not I won't be impressed right keep watching
Right, I'm back. Right, who left? Oh, not only did no one leave, right? New people arrived. That is dedication, okay? I'm proud of all of you, and I love you, and I appreciate you. And if this wasn't for the trading challenge, I would give one of you a free stick of RAM, right? But it is for the trading challenge. So all I'm going to do is say thank you. <laughs> so thank you for not leaving. And thank you for the two people that joined as a result of me going to the toilet, right? If you want, if that's the riveting content you're here for, I'll go again. And we'll keep going until we have hundreds of you here watching, okay? So if that's what you need, I'll do it. Right? I'm not bringing you with me, you pervs. Right. Let's have a look. What did the chat say whilst I'm gone? P right, yeah. <laughs> People joking about leaving. Very funny. DDR3 is still great for so many platforms. First to fourth gen Intel. Yeah, X, X58, X79. Budget stuff. Exactly, right? DDR3 is fantastic stuff. Right? You can still have a great gaming experience with modern games on a DDR3 based platform. Right? You're going to need, you can't go for like, you know, one of the CPUs we had in this bundle was an i3 550. You can't do it on that, right? Everyone knows that. But, you know, say for instance, an i4, so an i7 4770K, 4790K, you know, it's a four core CPU, sure. You know, it's at the tail end of what's considered decent enough for a budget gaming PC. But, you know, you can still play games on a, on a quad core system, right? A 4790K would make, is, yes, sure, I appreciate it won't be the best value, <laughs> best value gaming system, but it would make a competent gaming system. You could use it for sure, 100%, no doubt about it. Um, so Pavel's just asking what the i3 is. So the i3 that we got in this bundle was an i3 550. And we've also got Ulrich asking about where did we actually get this bundle because he missed the first part of the live stream. So let me clarify again for those that weren't here at the beginning. This bundle that I've got here is from the boot fair. So tomorrow morning I'll be at the boot fair. If anyone in the Medway area fancies coming along saying hello, I will be at the boot fair. Um, it's the Mark Greenfield's boot fair. It's in Rochester. And I will probably be there around 5 a.m., 6 a.m. sort of time. That's when it starts. That's where you get the best deals. So I'm going to be there then. If any of you are watching, fancy coming along, then feel free to say hello. That'd be nice to see you. Um, so yeah, if you want me to film it as well, right? Because I, I need the footage for the... I need, I need some sort of footage for the trading challenge video. So if you want me to film the boot fair as well, more than happy to do that. Just let me know in the chat right now. Um, but yeah, so essentially all of this came as a bundle. It all came in this box here and i paid a guy that was selling all this ram i think i paid him five pounds and essentially got all of this ram it's for the trading challenge so the aim is is to buy it resell it get all the money from it and put it towards a gaming pc so we started the year with a generic dell desktop i think it's a dell might be an hp uh, we sold that we bought an xbox we sold that we used the money to buy this and some xbox controllers now the aim is to sell that and get even more money and then as the year goes on the idea is we've got more and more money we can make better and better trades and in december i'll buy build trade for whatever a gaming pc and that will be our final submission for the challenge and that's the plan right black friday is going to be a big deal potentially we might be able to get some good deals at black friday um, the, one of the only rules, right, I'm allowed to try, I'm allowed to trade, I'm allowed to buy, I'm allowed to sell, but the rules are that I can't use money that wasn't part of the challenge, I can't use items that weren't part of a challenge, and I can't use, like, the fact that I've got a YouTube channel, or um, the fact that I work at Curry's to get me any discounts, right, so I can't use my staff discounts at Curry's, I can't um, incentivize you guys to buy things, um, that you wouldn't buy otherwise, right? Just because it's from me. Like, for instance, if I, I can't be like, oh, well, if you buy this stick of RAM, I'll. I mean, I could probably say it. If, I, if you buy this stick of RAM, I'll give you an RMD Tech sticker. Because, let's face it, this is not a big channel. This is not a popular channel. You don't care if you have an RMD Tech sticker. It makes no difference. So, so that's the vague overview, right, of what the challenge is. It's basically to prove that if you have enough time to buy, sell and trade, you can work your way up to something that's better than just a generic 
desktop PC that you know you, you might have to, like your aunt or your uncle or like a grandparent give to you at Christmas or something. Okay, you, you, that's the intentions, but you can work your way up to something that you can use for gaming. It might not be the best machine in the world, but it'll be something, and that's essentially what we're doing here. Um, let's have a look at the chat. What's going on? Yeah, yeah, but basically just talking about um, you know the boot fair. Oh, you know, people saying to film the boot fair, talking about budget PCs, people asking for an RMD Tech sticker. Let me show you the RMD Tech stickers, by the way, because I think they're cool. So I don't know how familiar everyone's going to be, but in early desktop PCs, up until probably, I, I want to say, 2000 is probably the mark of where they stopped doing this. Um, yeah, you know, it's, you know, some some case manufacturers did it after that as well, but up until then, it was quite popular to have a case badge. They were a twenty-five by twenty-five millimeter badge, which was on the front of a case, and it, basically you you put like one of the manufacturers would have like their logo in there. So what I had made was a whole sheet of gel stickers for the case badge slot. So they're all RMD Tech stickers. You can see them there. And they go perfectly in the case badge slot. And so if anyone's got a PC with a case badge slot and wants one of these, let me know on the Discord and I'm, I'll see if I can try and arrange getting one sent to you. Um, so that's that. They're pretty cool. It was actually it was cheaper to get a whole sheet of them like that than it was to buy just one. Because I only wanted one. Right, I wanted it for a specific PC. I only had one which had a case badge on it, and I wanted it for that. And it was cheaper. I think it cost me about 10, 15 pounds for that entire sheet. Um, it's cheaper to get that entire sheet than it was to just get one made. So we got an entire sheet. Um, so, so Pavel's just asking, does the boot fair have an entrance fee? No, it's completely free. It, they charge you if you want to sell things, if you want a stall to sell. Um, but it's one of those boot fairs where it's free entrance. It starts at 5 a.m., so you've got to get there quite early. It's, it's open quite late as well, but I get there at 5. I'm usually gone within an hour or two. I don't I don't stick around for ages. Um, but yeah, like last time, last week I was there, there was a Hewlett-Packard PC. Um, and it was a PC system, so it was the Hewlett-Packard Hewlett tower. It was the case, uh, so it was the tower, the monitor, keyboard, and mouse. It had a Pentium D processor. I couldn't tell anything else because the the case the, the box it was in was so damaged. But it had a Pentium D processor and it had never ever been opened. It was brand new and that thing was decades old, right? And it had never been opened, never seen the light of day. It had been in a shipping container and it had just been sat there for decades. Um, and I was really tempted by it. And it was only ten pounds. So it was a really good deal. Yeah, for a video anyway. You know, it's, it's a useless system. No one's going to be getting any sort of real use out of it. The parts inside of it weren't worth any money for reselling. Um, but I thought it was really interesting. And I thought, should I bring that home? Well, if I was a single man and lived on my own, I would say yes. And I would have bought it and I would have taken it home. But picturing the look on my girlfriend's face when I told her that I bought a 10, 15 year old Hewlett Packard PC in this giant box, there was no way that was gonna fly. She would not have been impressed. So I elected, maybe let's not buy the PC, right? Let's just leave it for someone else. Someone else can have it. But they had loads of cool stuff. That guy, he had like loads of brand new CIT cases. They were all in these boxes from this old shipping container, which I don't know whether it got lost or disregarded. I don't know what happened. Um, but there was some really cool stuff there. So if you're interested in tech and things like that, and if you want it, go down there and he might be there this weekend. He was there last weekend. Um, I don't, I, obviously, I can't guarantee that this random man is going to be at the boot fair again this weekend because obviously he's got to pay every week he wants to go, um, but he might be. So if he is, then you can buy it. If he's not, tough luck. Um, yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, basically just talking about the boot fair in the chat. So I'm trying to look at the chat. Anyway, let's have a look at some PC RAM. This is dated. This is dated 31st of March. Oh, sorry. <laughs> let's uh, get the right camera up. You go, it's dated 31st of March, 2008. That's pretty old. That's, anyone want to take a guess how old I was 
when this ram was dated? I'll give you a couple seconds to put in your guesses. Right. 31st of March 2008, I was seven years old. I was about a week away from my birthday, my eighth birthday. I'm sorry, I've probably made most of you feel really old um, because I am stupidly young and I apologise for that. <laughs> oh, 15. Wow. Yeah. No, definitely not. <laughs> no, I was less than half of that. I was seven. I'm a youngling. Yeah, Psycho, he was 20. That's uh, 13 years difference right there. That's uh, quite something, isn't it? So I apologise to everyone that I've made feel old there. I apologise. DDR3 again. DDR3 again. DDR2, DDR, standard DDR. Did any, by the way, did anyone look up how much it was for um, one gigabyte stick of DDR? How much that is going for at the moment? That'd be interesting to know. And we've got Nathan in the chat saying he was almost 34. Um, Nathan, I apologize if I've made you feel old um, because I am still not even 34. <laughs> um, so apologies for that. But hey, when that RAM was dated, you were almost 34. So think of it that way. And we got six quid on eBay for the DDR. So that, again, just that one stick alone is making our money back. Guys, this is, I think this is going to turn out to be a really profitable bundle. Um, but then again, it comes back to, should we sell it as a huge job lot bundle, as untested? Because I'm not going to test all of this right now. Or do we sell it all individually? And that's what it's going to come down to. And if anyone's got any advice or any ideas or anything like that, Leave it in the chat right now. Let me know. And exactly. There's nothing wrong with being old. I mean, there's nothing wrong whatsoever. You know, old, old and gold, right? That's what they say. Something like that. Ah! Oh, sorry. <laughs> scared the light. <laughs> Dropped a stick around and scared the life out of myself. Uh, that's two gigabytes of DDR2. Come on, give me something interesting. Got some more... Sell the tape round as well. What's this? DDR three. DDR three. What is this? That's a funky looking DDR two stick. Anyone seen one? I don't suppose that's... It doesn't quite... Assembled in the USA? R really? It looks like DDR. Does, it, does that look like DDR to anyone else? It looks like DDR to me. And I remember Matt. I think he might have left now. But Matt was saying that might be worth something. Might be worthwhile looking into that. Um... Nathan's 48 today. Oh, happy birthday, Nathan. Oh, happy birthday to you. That's, that is a good day, right? The 7th of May. We will remember that as the day Nathan turned 48. So happy birthday to you, my friend. Um, yeah, DDR2 again. Yeah, so does anyone know anything? I think Matt's gone now, but if anyone knows anything about the potential value of DDR2 that looks like DDR1, then let me know because I would like it if it was worth a little bit of money. It's only 512 megabytes though. Um, yeah, yeah, Pavel's saying about sort of, you know, testing it, not wanting to test it because it's so much effort. And yeah, I think I agree with you, mate. It is going to be a lot of effort. But if it means we get more money for it, it might be worthwhile doing. More DDR3. DDR3 piles are getting quite big now. 
I think I'm just going to start separating it. So DDR2 again, DDR2, DDR3. Oh, we've got a four gigabyte stick of DDR3. There we go. That's that's worth something, that one. What's this? This is a funky looking stick. DDR2 again. DDR2. 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 DDR3, riveting content. Oh, almost fell off my chair. DDR2. Yeah, this is riveting content, wouldn't you say, guys? Do you not have something better to do on your Saturdays other than stay here and do this? Oh, GDDR3. Interesting. Yeah, I've listened to this GDDR3. I haven't seen that on any of the other sticks. I'll put it in the pile. I say that and then find another one listed as GDDR3 about two seconds afterwards. More DDR3, more DDR2, more DDR3, more GDDR3, DDR2, DDR3. I think what we'll do is just sort it out quickly and then I think we might call it a day for the end of the live stream because I'm kind of getting a bit bored of testing everything out now. It's <laughs> it's getting a bit ridiculous. There's a, there's a lot to go through. Uh, just looking at the chat again, that's what we're saying. Oh, sorry. It's, it's the 8th of May in Australia. My bad. All right, it's the 8th of May, but happy birthday, right, for the time traveller that is Nathan because it's still the 7th of May here in the time where time makes sense. Um, really? Micron, so it's, oh, it's Micron Fat Body. That's what it's called. Right, well, let's have a look at this. I don't think that, because I forgot it was Micron Fat Body. I forgot that aspect. But 80 quid for a DDR2 stick. Really, uh, DDR, really? 80 quid for 512 megabytes. So I don't think that's what this is. And this is called Spectec. That's what it says. I don't think you'll be able to read that there. But that says Spectec. Spec T E K assembled in the USA. Yeah, I don't think that's going to be worth anything. But why is Micron Fat Body RAM so expensive? Does anyone understand that? Does anyone know? I mean, it's lost on me. Is it? I assume it's good for overclocking. I can't imagine it's worth that much for overclocking though, right? DDR2 again. DDR2. 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 Two. Two. DDR3! Whee! DDR2, DDR3, DDR2, DDR3, DDR2, DDR3, there we go, right, that's all DDR2 there. So it's actually about 50-50 DDR2, DDR3. Wow, Nathan coming in at three o'clock in the morning for this live stream. Hats off to you, Nathan. Showing the dedication, dedication to the RMD Tech channel. I love it, I love it. But we are gonna call it a day in a minute, right? We're not gonna do this for much longer because I'll be honest, this is a lot of RAM and I'm looking at it thinking, I really cannot be bothered to test it all. So unless you guys have got any sort of Q&A style questions for me, I might start wrapping things up in a second. Though I think I want to test out this OCZ 
stick right here just first. I think that would be good. Maybe we'll we'll finish the we'll finish the live stream off with this as a final test. If anyone's got any Q and A style questions for me, then we'll do that. I don't think they will though, so we'll do this and we'll end the live stream now. I think. So let's uh, let's get this going. I mean, I think I think you guys can see in the background just over here. Yeah, you can see that's our pile of DDR3 right there. Over there, I've got DDR1. We've got some server stuff just out of shot over there. And we've got a pile of CPUs as well. So we've got a lot of good stuff in this bundle. And I'm really, really quite chuffed with it. And I really hope the DDR4 stuff's working. But I'll, you'll have to wait until the, um, the video which goes up about this stage of the trade challenge. Once the video goes up, I'll let you know what goes on with these two sticks of DDR4. If they're working, the detail, well, if, and if they're not working, you'll be updated in the video. So make sure you get subscribed, you watch that video, right? Because it's going to be interesting. I'm excited to know if that works. Uh, Pavel, if you want an R&D Tech sticker, then um, message me on on the Discord at some point. Message, put a message in the buy and sell channel on Discord. Letting me know you're looking to, you're looking for it, right? And I'll see what I can arrange for you. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, anyone that wants one, let me know because I've got a lot of them. If you want an RMD Tech sticker, we can get them posted, or you know, I can. If anyone's at the boot fair tomorrow, I can bring them along. So yeah, let me know. Let me know. They're 3D stickers too, right? That's really cool. They're 3D stickers. Uh, and it's also looking like this OCZ RAM is working as well because it's showing single channel. It's saying a memory test okay. Looking pretty good. We're not loading into BIOS though, which is the only thing. But again, this is the Wish PC motherboard, so we know what it's like. Come on. Let me into the BIOS. Here we go. Come on. No, it's doing that weird thing again where it just does the flashing cursor, which you can't see because my camera's in the way. Right, we're going to try one more time to get into BIOS. One more time. Okay. Delete, delete, delete. Prepare to enter setup. Here we go. Flashing cursor again. So who knows if it works, really, because yes, the PC is booting, but is the fact we can't get into BIOS because of this stick of RAM? I don't know. Because it's showing there, it's showing it's past the memory test. Again, flashing cursor, we're stuck at a flashing cursor. Doesn't fill me with a whole load of hope. Clearing the BIOS might work. Yeah, we can give it a try. Let's give it a try. Take the battery out. Flip the power supply switch. Try powering on. Right. Let's see what happens there. Got the battery here. I don't think it's going to make a blind bit of difference though. Yeah, it's not looking hopeful. But yeah, no, it's a good point about clearing the BIOS because we've put God knows how many sticks of RAM in this PC at this point. So yeah, it makes sense that it's probably confused it a little bit. Uh, oh. <laughs> I think that RAM might be broken. Anyone else get the feeling that maybe the RAM's not working? I don't know what would make me think that. But I think the RAM might be, um, and you have to excuse my French, fucked. <laughs> let's, yeah, let's, can we... 
yeah, that's uh, that's definitely going in the bad bin. Okay, and that's not we're not selling that. As nice as that stick of ram is, I'd be a bastard if I tried selling that to someone. Unless I sold it to CEX. It's a 2 gigabyte DDR2 stick. That's 20 pence from CEX. That might be worthwhile. Unless I sold it for gold recovery as a bundle with all the other broken ones on eBay. That's probably a better idea. That's... Sell it as a gold recovery bundle on eBay. That's, that's the better play. However, this is the first time I've ever seen a post screen look like this. So, um, oh, there's a smiley face in there. I don't know if you guys can see. There's, if you, right. Let's see if I, if I can show you guys where the smiley face is on this. I didn't even know there was an asking character for smiley faces. But anyway, right. So if you look, it's about midway on the screen, like about halfway in terms of like the width, halfway, look halfway along. It's a gray smiley face. It's about halfway down the screen, so it's roughly in the middle, leaning a little bit further to the right. If you look roughly further to the right, you can see a grey smiley face. And yeah, Pavel, you're right. Yeah, taking it, taking RAM out of a PC midway through it running, I wouldn't be surprised if you saw something like this. But I haven't done that, so I don't know what's gone wrong. <laughs> uh, but can anyone see the... Oh, and it's right... The, the gray smiley face is right above a musical note, right? And see you later, Tech215, right? Thank you for joining the stream. We're, we're ending it off anyway. This is a fantastic way to end the stream. There's a smiley face, a musical note. I can see a spade, like from a deck of cards, a spade. We've got an up and down arrow. We've got some funky shit going on here. But anyway, right, let's... <laughs> There's lots of... Oh, is there, is there more faces? Oh, there is lots of faces. Oh, yeah. Never mind. There's a lot of faces. Okay, right. Let's end off the live stream. <laughs> because we're getting to the point now where I'm not interested in testing it. You're not interested in testing it. We're going to go through... I'm going to go through myself and get it all tested. The stuff that isn't working, if there's enough of it, I'll sell it as a gold recovery lot on, on eBay. I'm probably going to need about a kilogram of non-functional RAM for that, though, um, to, to, you know, for it to be worthwhile someone purchasing it. So if that's the case, then great, I'll do that. If not, I'm, I don't know. I don't know how I'll get rid of it. It might just have to go as a gold recovery lot anyway, because I, morally speaking, I can't sell it as untested because that's, <laughs> that, you know, because I have tested it, so I know it doesn't work. Uh, so selling it as untested is not, not a very nice thing to do to people um so i'll probably do a gold recovery lot instead because that's essentially you know that's a way that people sell bulk loads of these sorts of things for a decent amount of money on on ebay um but yeah that's the end of the live stream really guys we got some good stuff in here it was mostly i'd say ddr2 then ddr3 was probably the most common thing but the bit i'm happiest with is the fact we've got ddr4 I was not expecting any. Is, let me just double check it is DDR4. It is PC4. PC4 means DDR4. Yeah. And these are these are Samsung chips on this one as well. These are this is good stuff. We've got Samsung and SK Hynix. That's good stuff. I'm happy with that. So 12 gigabytes of DDR4. You really can't complain. Really can't. So Thank you guys for watching the live stream. I really appreciate you guys all coming out. Um, I appreciate it wasn't the most interesting of live streams, but that's what you subscribe to this channel for, right? It's chilled out. It's relaxed. We don't do things properly. I'm just here for a bit of fun. You're here to watch me do stupid shit. That's kind of that's kind of the deal, right? And if, if you got this far, you've already basically accepted that, right? That's a, You've accepted that as a fact a long time ago. But anyway, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. I hope maybe I'll see you guys at the boot fair tomorrow. Otherwise, I'll film it. I'll let you guys know how it goes. You, you'll see the update video. And then that's about it. So thanks for watching again. And I will see you all in the video whenever that is. All right. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.